Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim today, inshallah, hadith number three. Ran Aisha ta Rabbi Allah ran Rabbi Allah ran ha qalat qalan Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la hijrata ba'da fat ba'da al fatri walakin jihadun wa niyatun wa idas tan firtum fan firu mutafakun alayhi wa ma'nahu. لا هجرة من مكة لأنها صارت دار إسلام عائشة رضي الله عنها narrated that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said there is no there is no immigration after the conquest of مكة but only jihad striving and fighting in the cause of Allah will continue and intention so, if you are summoned to fight, go forth. No emigration from Mecca because it became a land of Islam. Commentary This hadith contains the Prophet's nullifying hijrah after the conquest of Mecca. He وسلم, said there is no emigration. However, this annulment is not absolute. That is to say, emigration has not been abrogated with the conquest. In fact, emigration will not end until the repentance from sins ends and repentance will not end until the sun rises from its place of set, as is contained in a hadith from the Messenger of Allah wasallam. Conversely, the meaning of the annulment here is annulment of hijrah from Mecca as stated by the author. May Allah have mercy on him. Because after the conquest, Mecca became a land of Islam and will never subsequently return to being a land of disbelief. For that reason, the Prophet wasallam annulled emigration after the conquest. Mecca used to be under the rule of the polytheists. They expelled the Messenger of Allah wasallam from it and so he migrated by his Lord's permission to Medina. After eight years, the Prophet wasallam returned to Mecca victorious, triumphant, and assisted by his Lord. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. From then on, Mecca, which was previously a land of disbelief, became a land of belief, a land of Islam. And so there will not be emigration from it thereafter. This contains evidence that Mecca will never return to a land of disbelief. It will rather continue to be a land of Islam to the last hour or until Allah wills. Then he, peace and blessings be upon him, said, But what will remain for the people of Mecca is jihad and intention. That is, what will happen thereafter is jihad. The people of Mecca will only advance from Mecca for jihad. And the intention refers to the right intention for jihad in the path of Allah. And that it is and that is when the individual intends with his participating in the jihad that Allah's words reign supreme. Then the, uh, the Prophet wasallam said, When you are summoned to fight, then go forth. That is, when your leader instructs you to march forth for jihad in the path of Allah, you must set out by way of obligation. Under that circumstance, the jihad becomes fard ain, an individual obligation. When people are mobilized for jihad, it is obligatory on them to set out. No individual should tarry except those excused by Allah based on His saying, the Exalted, A'udhu Billahi Mina Shaytan Rajeem. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَا لَكُمْ إِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمْ فِرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ هِثَّا قَلْتُمْ إِلَى الْأَرْضِ أرضي أرضيتم بِالْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا مِنَ الْآخِرَةِ فَمَا مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ 
إلا تنفروا يعذبكم عذابا أليما ويستب ويستبدل قوما غير غيركم ولا تضروه شيئا والله على كل شيء قدير. O oh, ye who believe, what is the matter with you that when you are asked to march forth in the cause of Allah, i.e. jihad, you cling heavily to the earth? Are you pleased with the life of this world as compared rather than the hereafter? But little is the enjoyment of the life of the uh, of the life of live of word of the life of word world as compared to the hereafter. If you march not forth, he will punish you with painful torment and will replace you with another people and you cannot harm and you cannot harm him at all. This is one of the circumstances in which jihad becomes an individual obligation. The second circumstance when the enemies surround a Muslim land. <clears throat> that is, the enemy advanced, reaching the city and besieged it. Jihad, in that circumstance, becomes an individual obligation. It becomes obligatory upon each and every individual to fight, including the women. The able in the circumstance, uh, the able in the circumstance, among the old, since this is jihad for defense, and there is difference between the war for defense and the assault. But in this circumstance, it is obligatory to call the entire people to arms in order to defend their land. The third circumstance, when the rows are established and the two sides face one another, the lines of the disbelievers and the lines of the Muslims, jihad, in that circumstance also becomes an individual obligation. And it is not allowed for anyone to leave as Allah the Exalted says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu idha laqeetumul ladheena kafaru zahfan fala fala tuwalluhumul Adbar. وما يعلم وما يعلم وما أو متحرزا إلى فئة فقد باء بغضب من الله ومأواه جهنم وبئس المصير. Oh, you who believe, when you meet those who disbelieve in a battlefield, never turn your back to them. And whoever turns his back to them on such a day, unless it be a stratagem of war, or to retreat to a troop of his own, he indeed has drawn upon himself wrath from Allah, and his abode is hell, and worst indeed is that destination. The Prophet ﷺ also mentioned retreating from the battlefield as one of the seven destructive sins. The fourth, the fourth circumstance. If a particular individual is indeed, or uh, if a particular individual is needed, perhaps only the individual knows well how to use a specific weapon, and so the people need him to operate this new equipment. For example, if then becomes specifically, it then becomes specifically obligatory on him to fight in the jihad even if the ruler does not particularly mobilize him, and that is for the reason that he is needed. 
In these four circumstances, jihad becomes an individual obligation, but in other than these situations, it is a collective obligation. The people of knowledge say it is obligatory upon the Muslims to engage in jihad at least once in a year. They should fight the enemies of Allah that the words of Allah should reign supreme and not for the purpose of defending the country just because it is a country for the reason that defending the country just because it is a country could be done by both the believer and the non-believer. Even the non-Muslims defend their countries, but the Muslim defends Allah's religion, and so he defends his country not for its being a country, for example. He rather defends it because it is an Islamic city, and as such, he defends it by way of protecting Islam, which has taken roots in the city. For this reason, is it is incumbent on us in the kind of circumstance we live in today to admonish the generality of the people that the calls for national liberation and its like are improper and that the people should rather be mobilized towards the religion that we should defend our religion before anything else because our land is a land of the religion the land of islam which deserves protection and defense so we should guard and preserve it with this intention as for defending it with the intention of patriotism or nationalism, this could be done by the believer and a disbeliever, and, uh, and it will not be of any advantage to the individual on the, on the day of resurrection. And if he were killed while, while defending his country with such an intention, he is not a martyr because the Messenger of Allah وسلم, was asked, about a man fighting out of passion or to show bravery or to establish his status. Which of these is in the cause of Allah? He answered, Whoever fights that the word of Allah reigns supreme, that is in the cause of Allah. Consider this con condition. Whoever fights that the word of Allah reigns supreme, not because it is his country. If you, are, if you are fighting for your country, yourself and the disbeliever will be equal. So you should rather fight that Allah's word reigns supreme, expressing that in your country owing to your country being a land of Islam. In that situation, the fight will be one done in the cause of Allah. It is authentically related from him وسلم, that he said, No one will be wounded in the cause of Allah. And Allah knows best who is wounded in his cause, except that he comes on the day of resurrection with a wound gushing blood. The color will be of blood, while the fragrance will be the smell of musk. Contemplate how the Prophet وسلم, gave a condition for martyrdom that the individual must be fighting in Allah's cause and fight in the cause of Allah is that one fights for the purpose of making Allah's word supreme. Therefore, it is compulsory for the students of knowledge to explain to the people that fighting for a country is not a right fight. One only rightly fights that Allah's word reigns supreme and that I should fight for my country because it is a land of Islam. So I should protect it against its enemies and the enemies of Islam. Such is the right and sound intention. Allah alone grants success. Okay, and that's it for hadith number three. Jazakumullahu khayran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.